person beside you and say good morning. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, if children aren't dismissed yet, they're dismissed for Children's Church. We're going to um, uh, move move quickly here. Uh, I'll get uh, Adam up uh, to uh, to uh, do the um, offering. Yes. Ah, uh, thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Um, Pastor John, would you mind doing this side for the offering? Yes. Lord, I just, uh, I don't know what to say, Lord, except you are awesome, oh God. Amen. We just look to you, Lord, to for all our provision and everything that you've, <laughs> you are the supplier of everything, oh God, and all that you've given to us. Father God, we are so thankful. So today we just say, Lord, we give back to you, Lord. We give back to you in, in, uh, oh, Father, we give back to you with gl gladness. And Father God, we just thank you for that that you've given. Hallelujah. Amen. I messed up. I messed up. Yeah, let's roll the announcements, and we'll have Pastor David Silver ministering today. And and uh, when he comes up, give him a hand, okay? So here are the announcements. On fire. Is this thing on? Is this thing on? Yeah. That's pretty professional. Is this thing on? As we were singing the last song, the scripture came to mind, so I just want to read it from Isaiah 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Imagine. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With two it covered its face. With two it covered its feet. And with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongs of the altar. 
And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is purged. Amen. How wonderful is that? Praise God, your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is purged. So, Father, as we continue today, we thank you that you've taken away our iniquity, that our sin is purged. It is purged. It is cleansed. It is forgiven, and we are healed. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the word this morning that was spoken about taking a stand against the enemy. Thank you, Father, for your spirit that moves in our hearts and lives and brings forth wonderful worship and praise. Thank you, Father, for communion. Yes. Thank you, Father God, for this miracle of everlasting life that we live in right now. Thank you, Father, for thine is the kingdom, Lord, the power and all the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 54, 17 says this. Of course, you know it's King James, right? The these and the thous. Because that is how God speaks. We know that. Amen. No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Did you catch that? This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Their righteousness is of me. The first part of that verse, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. I want to just kind of break this verse down a little bit. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment you will condemn. No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. Did you ever have a really good look at that verse? I did the other day, and I noticed just the phrasing of the first part of that verse because we've all heard it before we know it and maybe we quote it even but it says no weapon that is formed against you will prosper no weapon that is formed against you will prosper and as I was looking at that I thought can we just maybe have that back on the overhead I thought that's really interesting that particular kind of phrasing because it doesn't say no weapon will prosper. It's not speaking in terms of a general assault. Did you notice that? It's specific. It's personal. It's targeted. No weapon that is formed against you. So if it's specific and targeted, you know, it's got, it's got our name on it. Yeah. And did you ever notice that sometimes battles are like that? Things that will really affect one person and really get under their skin and really start to harass them just really would really have no effect on you. Yeah, just, you know, you just find that. Mm -hmm. And so you go, oh, well, come on, you know. You know, pull up your socks, whatever, pray, you know, whatever. But then the next day, something just rocks your world. Because it's been formed against you. You see? It's formed against you. To get under your skin, to get under the armor if it's possible. Or find a way to get in there. It's specifically targeted for you. But the Bible says, no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you will condemn. They're connected. 
This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. So there's all kinds of stuff in there. But I felt it was important for us to kind of catch on to that right off the bat. That very often attacks are personal. Yeah. They've got your name on them. Yeah. They resonate, right? And they're targeted against you. And those are the ones that will not prosper. Why won't they prosper and how do we fight against them? Because we know that they happen. So let's not go around saying they don't happen. You know, happy Christians, right? Let's not do that. Okay? That's not wear any masks. Yeah, really. yeah. This was, you know, I had a few days this week that were days from hell. Yeah. 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 Period. And they're pushing all my old buttons. Mm -hmm. Things that I thought were Oh, dealt with long ago. Oh, really? But no weapon formed against me or you will prosper. Why? Why? You know, it kind of came out of it and I remember, I remember the clouds parting and coming out and all that kind of stuff and the light shining again. I remember the moments that was happening because there was a strong intercession going on. Romans 8, 2 says this. This is huge. Huge. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now I want us to get our heads around this verse. Because the law, why will no weapon formed against you will prosper? Why does that say that? Because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. In other words, I've gone from the law of sin and death where I lived in, and now I'm in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It's different. I'm in a different room than the room I used to live in. I used to live in the law of sin and death. That is how the weapon formed against you prospers. Because it comes from the law of sin and death. Its origin is there. That's where the devil lives. That's where the enemy of our lives lives and dwells. In the law of sin and death. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy right? Father of lies. Father of lies. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment you will condemn. Every tongue. The enemy of our lives lives in the law of sin and death. What is the deal with the law of sin and death? The law of sin and death enslaves us. It imprisons us. It keeps us in, you know, in a place. Did you ever hear somebody say, well, I put them in their place? <laughs> Did you ever say, have you ever done it? <laughs> That's what the law of sin and death does. It tells you where your place is and then puts you in there and keeps you in there. I had somebody... Uh, contact me one time because God had spoken to them to contact me and the Lord just wanted me to know how selfish I was but didn't want me to, res to respond to it this person said on the phone said, but God doesn't want you to respond to that he just wants you to think about it and I thought so the Lord's painting me in a corner accusing me, condemning me, putting judgment on me, and doesn't want me to say anything. Yeah, that sounds like him. <laughs> that was this church person who just loves God. And then wrote me like this three or four page letter 
just to make sure I knew how disappointed God was in me. That was a weapon formed against me. That was a weapon formed against me. But the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. That came out of the law of sin and death. How do we know we're in it? How do we know we're thinking like that? Romans 6.23, it's a famous one that we use for evangelism. For the wages of sin is death. Right? The wages. That's how you know if you're in. You get what you deserve. Well, you know, I don't really deserve to be healed because, well, you know. Well, you know, I kind of deserve to be feeling this way because, well, you know. You know, oh, I understand. Yeah, I know. Yes, things happen to me sometimes. Well, that's because, you know, it's my wages. That, the origins of the, that kind of thinking comes out of the law of sin and death. And it's a law. It's legalistic. If you're guilty in the law, you're guilty and you stand to be accused and condemned. And that's how we were living. And that's where the world, quote, lives. In the law of sin and death. This is making sense, right? We all have this kind of voice, this self-talk that happens in our lives from time to time. And it can be reflecting, it, our mood can be a reflection of the self-talk. That's how you know. I was talking to someone this week. I said, how do you know? He said, how is your mood? Is your mood in sin and death? A little, just a little depressed? Oh, I don't know. I just don't think it's just, what's the use? I don't know. I pray, but I don't know. I don't know. Well, that sounds like sin and death. It sounds like the origin is from there and the fruit comes from there. Now, I'm not going to stay here, so I'm not putting a damper on everything. But I want us to understand the law of sin and death. And how so often, that's really the voice that resonates in our souls. Unfortunately, when we're caught up in worship and really caught up in it, the law of sin and death can't touch us, can it? We don't think like that. We're swept up into glory. You know, God is expressing himself. We're expressing ourselves. And the law of sin and death has no room. Because we're living in the law of the spirit of life. In Christ Jesus. And that makes us free from the law of sin and death. And we get it. Our minds are connected to the spirit in that way. And in those times, we get it. And we go, yeah, glory! Glory! And we're there. Yes. Because that's the truth. Yes. That's our position as children of God. Seated together in heavenly places, Ephesians says. We actually are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. It's enormous. You know? When I think of that verse, you know, the next obvious question would be, well, if you're seated up there, how's the view? What do you see? What do you see when you're in the glory of God? What do you see when you're caught up? Look, because you'll see. How often do we have in Scripture where someone had an encounter with God? He says, Son of man, what do you see? What do you see? I met someone for the first time the other day, and this person said to me, who's just starting to hear the voice of God, kind of figuring it out. And she said to me, she said, you know, I'm a very visual person. I said, yes. Yes. Let yourself see. Because you live in the law of the spirit of life. And yet the, lo the law of the spirit of death, sin and death, would say to someone like that, oh, don't be ridiculous. Oh, come on. Kids, you know, use their imagination. Grow up. The law of this sin and death. The 
law of the spirit of life says, what do you see? Yeah. What do you see? So as this message kind of goes today, kind of always have a little thing going on in your mind going, well, what is my self-talk? What have I been feeling about me or about events and circumstances and situations? You know? Because no weapon formed against you will prosper. Because it'll all come out of the law of sin and death. A legalistic understanding of things. A legalistic description of you. It won't be filled with grace and acceptance and mercy, which is the fruit of the Spirit and the essence of God's heart and the cross. It'll be something of a different sort. Right? The wages of sin is death. But, we all know the end of that verse, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Come on, that's our evangelistic verse. Our evangelistic verse for the day. <laughs> Romans 6.23. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Romans 8.2 again. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It's a different one. It's a different one. So let's look at it. We've looked at the law of sin and death. I don't want to stay there. But it's important for us to understand it. You know? That's when you say, oh, I'm such a whatever. You're speaking out of the law of sin and death. Oh, I just can't seem to... You're speaking out of the law of sin and death. Because the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's truth. Oh, I don't know. I just, I, out of the law of sin and death comes poverty. A spirit of poverty. That comes out of the law of sin and death. That's death. What does God say? I've sent my only begotten son to die on the cross to remove all your sins so you can be poor. <laughs> but the law of sin and death would say that. Yeah. Well, you're a Christian, you know. You mustn't... Well, that's not in the Bible. That wasn't what God said to Abraham or to Isaac or to Jacob or to anyone. That comes out of the law of sin and death. It's like, well, I deserve what, you know. I know I've gone through this, but we need to hear it. Scripture says, I made you the head and not the tail. You will lend and not borrow. That's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It's, it comes from a different place. It comes from a different place. Romans 8.10 says this. If Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. So the law of the Spirit of life is all about being alive. It's all about living and being fruitful and having, you know, your life express itself in God's design, in His perfect design. The Spirit is life. So when you get the thoughts that say, oh, you know, God, you know, he's mad at me, he's disappointed with me, he's upset with me, he's this, he's that with me, that's not life. The Spirit is life because of righteousness. That's the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says this, now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There's expression. 
There's living. You can breathe. You can breathe. A couple of days ago, when, it, when, the, when the day was really tough, I said to my girlfriend, I said, we were talking on the phone, I said, it just feels like my head is in a vice. You know? I couldn't breathe. Couldn't think. I sent her a text, I said, I can't even hardly think. The stress of some situation I was in was just crippling. And I thought, this is not the law of the spirit of life. There's nothing here but death. I can't, I can't breathe. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. There's freedom. And the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Where we can go, yes, Lord. Let's go. Come on, let's go. And sometimes we all need a message like this, don't we? Amen. Where you can just shake it off. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Enough. I love that word today. Good word. Enough is enough, you know? Shake it off. Let's go. Yeah. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death and no weapon formed with your name on it will prosper because it will all come out of the law of the spirit of death. Right. And it will not prosper. Right. It can't. Right. It can't. Because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you free from it. And that's where you're positioned. That's where you're seated. In the law of the spirit of life. Where there's liberty. Now so we might be tempted to go, yeah, but. Don't you hate those yeah, buts? You are. You know, the Word of God says something, you go, wow, that's true, but then when I think about it in terms of me, it's, yeah, but. Yeah, it's true for, you know, I mean, yeah, it's true for you, and yeah, but, you know. Romans 8, 3. I love this verse. For what the law could not do, what the law could not do, because it was weak through the flesh. Lord, I'm willing that my flesh is weak. Just because the law says you're only supposed to drive 100 kilometers an hour on the highway. <laughs> doesn't mean. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Next verse. And for sin. Isn't that something? God sent his son for sin. I remember when I was reading that verse and all of a sudden I just noticed that those three little words. And for sin. God sent his son for sin. Go get the sin. Yeah. Go get the sin. Yeah. Go get it. Whew. Jesus condemned sin in the flesh. That's awesome. Whereas sin condemns us, Jesus condemned the sin. Yeah and rendered it ineffective and powerless. He killed the sin. Yes. He killed the sin in his own flesh. His own flesh absorbed all the sin like a sponge. Just how dark would that have been? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My sin separated him from God, from the Father. He sucked my sin right off, right out of my life. Yes. He lifted it. 
He lifted your sin, sucked it right out of your life, right into his. It's gone. He condemned the sin because when he died, he went to hell for three days. He took your sin, my sin, and all the law of the spirit of death and took it down there and left it there. Right? Revelation says, uh, Jesus rose, I have the keys of death and of hell. Yes. I have the keys. Yes. That stuff is locked in there. Yes. And it's not getting out. Right. Right. Ever. Right. Scriptures say, you know, he, he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Indeed. Amen. So the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. So all the yeah, but consequences of sin and death don't apply. Now a weapon might have your name on it and says it does apply. And it'll wig try and wiggle into your conscience. Now this is not a license to do stupid things. We know that. Right? I don't have to talk, go into that, do I? Maybe for some of us, we'll be meeting after. Okay, the line will form to the left. I mean, the sin and death has been condemned along with the author of it. Yeah. And he knows it. That's awesome. And yet I know that within my life and with many of our lives, there's still that thing that'll try and rise up and keep you down. Like that letter I got. The, yeah, but God just wants you to know that really, you know. Oh, good. Well, let's just tie my hands and feet so I feel totally unworthy in the name of the Lord and then I'll be ineffective and powerless in the name of the Lord because God really wants me to know that. Pfft. No. No. And that's for everyone who's sitting in this room right now. Enough. Someone said today, enough is enough. Don't buy that. Right. Yeah, but don't buy that. Because you live in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And no weapon formed against you will prosper. God, con Jesus condemned sin in the flesh. He condemned sin in his flesh. When his flesh died, so did your sin. And the consequence of it. That's a fact. Praise the Lord. I'm getting excited. Yeah. <laughs> if you're Pentecostals, you can jump and shout. If you're Anglicans, you can quietly nod and go, Amen. I can say that because I come from an Anglican background. Come on. I can say it. 1 John 3.8 says this. 1 John 3, 8. First John 3, 8 says this. You see, we don't bring our Bibles to church anymore, otherwise we'd all be there, right? I have my Bible. I'll just read it. He that commits sin is of the devil. That's speaking from in your heart. For the devil sins from the beginning. Second part of 1 John 3, 8 says this. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Are we up? There we go. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. For this purpose, for this purpose, for this purpose, why did Jesus come? For this purpose, that he might, what? Limit? Hinder? No. Destroy. 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 Destroy the works of the devil in your life and in mine. 
The purpose that he came was to destroy the works of the devil. And the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death, and no weapon formed against you will prosper. He came to destroy it. Romans 8, 6 says this. Are we there yet? Nope. Romans 8, 6 says this. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded is death, and to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now there's some real key words in this verse. We're just kind of going through this. We're parsing through all this. And most of this comes from Romans chapter 8. To be carnally minded. Minded. Is death. But to be spiritually minded minded is life and peace. So where does most of the attack and battle happen? Yeah. Right in here. I mean, stuff happens. I mean, we know stuff happens. But really, the real battle is in your mind. Because that's even how you deal with what happens circumstantially. You know? The same events can happen to two different people and they will respond or react completely differently. And it'll be based on what's coming from, where it's coming from, how you interpret things. Do you interpret them in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus or do you interpret it from the law of sin and death? Where's the root, you know? So to be carnally minded in the law of sin and death yeah, well, you know, this stuff always happens to me. You know, here we go again. I expected as much. Things are going pretty good. Yeah, I was waiting for the bomb to drop. Or to be spiritually minded, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus set me free from the law of sin and death. Okay, what's the fruit? What's the opportunity? Where do we go? What kind of light can come out of darkness? 2 Corinthians 4, 6, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts. Scriptures in the Old Testament that says God dwells in the thick darkness. In my worst day this week, the Lord absolutely told me to go to a certain place. Of course it was Starbucks. We stop, we pause, we bow. Starbucks. Okay. <laughs> so, I was on my way to a certain one But in my mind, I was supposed to go to another one. I was supposed to go to the one in West Edmonton Mall. The chapters one. I was going to another mall. And I just thought, but it was just this. This was the day that I texted her and said, you know, my, my head is just in a vice. I can't even think. I just got to get out of the house. Just got to go have a frappuccino kind of thing. Anyways, so I'm on my way and I was driving past the mall and I could feel the Lord saying, you know, and, ah, I'm going to go to the other one. I got about two more blocks and was like, ah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I thought I heard him say, you know, you can go to the other one. But you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. Went, oh, okay, okay. And I turned around. I made a U-turn. Went back, walked in. I said, okay, Lord, you've got an encounter for me here. I couldn't understand how I could even hear him, considering how it had been going. But of course, the Word of God, we all learn this, is sharp and powerful than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. So your soul can be in a storm, and God can just speak to your spirit, and you'll hear him. Right in the middle of the mess. Don't you love that? Isn't God just too much sometimes? Or all the time? Just too much. Like it's crazy. It's crazy, really. 
So I walked in, okay, whatever. Got a got my drink and where am I gonna sit? Sit over there? No, I don't think so. I think I'm gonna go sit over there. So I went and sat there, and there was a gal sitting in opposite, kind of moved her stuff and I moved there. Instant conversation. Instant. And before that eating was over, like full testimony, full everything, talked about a bunch of stuff, praying in the mall, just heads bowed and praying. Wow. Incredible. Incredible. And this person, just her common denominators and you know, what's going on in my life and in my girlfriend's life, those two, she says, could I, could I call her? I said, absolutely. She'd love to hear what you've got to say. She's just a new believer. Just a new believer. We shut Starbucks down, standing outside, and uh, said, well, you know, let's pray. So just, yeah, yeah, let's just have a word of prayer. We were just praying in the mall. And it was just fantastic. She said, you know, she said, I'm just kind of starting to hear God's voice and I'm kind of trying to sort that out. So I know kind of what's him and what's me and how it all kind of works. He's just a relatively new believer. Totally enthused. And really enriched. She's the one that said, you know, I'm a visual person. So, check this out now. She said to me, you know, she said, I actually live on the other end of town. And I was going to go to this other Starbucks, the one I was going to go to. <laughs> and she said, I just, I don't know, I kept seeing this one in my mind. And, I, and my eyes must have got like saucers. And she just exactly said what I said in the car by myself to God. The Lord said, you need to go. She said she had to turn around and go to the mall. That's awesome. Yeah. Or she could miss it. Is that just what? What? You know? Praise the Lord. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus set us free from the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death was, ah, don't worry about it, just go where you want to go. Don't worry about it. The law of the spirit of life said, yeah, but if you should go over here, I got something for you over here. Yeah, but Lord, I got this stress headache that's just pushing my eyes out, you know. Well, just, just go over there. Yeah, but I've been mad all day. Yeah, yeah, just go over there. Well, ended up testifying, da, 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 praying. Just, she said to me, she said, you know, you look a lot different now than you did when you first sat down. <laughs> she said, there's a light that's, yeah. she's, that's actually the word she used. There's a light that's shining out of you. To be carnally minded is death. Back to Romans 8, 6. To be carnally minded is death. The yeah buts. But to be spiritually minded is life. Right? Love it. Life and peace. Okay. We're going to keep going. Isaiah, uh, Psalm 55, 22 says this. Cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will. He will. He will never suffer the righteous to be moved. How do, you be carnal, how do you be spiritually minded or carnally minded? Take your carnally mindedness and just cast it on the Lord. And then you'll be spiritually minded. And it was so crazy. I'll tell you another thing. I mean, we're here. I got gotcha. you. So <laughs> we'll be here for a few minutes. But I even had that thing happen to me this week. I was out for a run and there's been... I don't, I'm sure I'm the only one in the room that struggles with forgiveness. Forgiving other people. I know I'm the only one. Right? And just for the longest time, this little niggling, yeah, but this guy, yeah, but this guy, you know. And I kept, oh Lord, oh Lord, you know. And I finally, I just saw this, you know, this thing where the Lord just had a plate in his hand. And I'm, you know, running and I'm wrestling with forgiving this guy or not. And he said, why don't you just put it on my plate? Just set it there. 
because it's mine. So let it be mine. This guy's a pastor. Not sitting in this room. <laughs> I thought, better qualify that. He says, why don't you just put them on my plate? And I, and I was going along and I thought, okay. And it's like I could see myself putting it on his plate. And I had an immediate sense of freedom and liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, freedom, right? But it felt kind of weird. Because it had been there for so long, it was like almost a source of power. Do you know that? Unforgiveness is like a source of power, but it, its roots and origins are in the law of the spirit of sin and death. So do we want that power? It's like anger. You know, some people like to get angry because they, you know, you can see more clearly sometimes, or you think you do when you're all wound up about something. But that's coming from the law of sin and death. And you don't see clearly. You don't. The devil's very angry. He doesn't see anything. Okay, let's, let's kind of get back into Isaiah 54, 17. About the weapon, prospering or not. If we can get back to Isaiah 54, 17. All right, let's, let's do this. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper because it's all going to come out of the law of sin and death. It's going to have your name on it. It's going to be targeted. It's an arrow. Right? And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you will condemn because that's what's going to be a part of it. It's going to be something that is going to come against you in judgment. You know, you're a whatever, you can't do this, you shouldn't, you know, blah, 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 blah. Something to pick away at you, something to rip you down, something to paralyze you, something to make you paint it into a corner, something like that. When those things come to you, you condemn them. That's a strong word. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment now, we're not talking about correction. You know, we're not talking about things like that. We're not talking about, you know, righteous living. What we're talking about is judgment. You're a... You always... You always will. It'll never... You know, those things. Those tongues that rise against you in judgment, you will condemn them. You will condemn them. And you'll stand and say, that is not true. Amen. And I curse you to the roots. Yes. I curse that to the roots that tries to put that on me. Yeah. Don't you dare even try to put that on me with all your yeah buts. Really. Don't even try it. Right. Don't even try it. Amen. Why? Because this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. This is your heritage. This is your bloodline. This is where you come from. This is who you are. This is your identity. This is you. You have rights and authority to stop the mouth. You have rights and authority to stop the finger pointing and the accusations. However, that snake tries to sneak in there, slithering and not making a sound. When he raises up his head to do a thing, you stop it. You stop it. You condemn it. Use some force. Use your words. Use the scriptures. Cut it down. The word of the Lord is the sword of the Lord. The word of the Lord is Jesus. This is your heritage to every tongue that rises against you in judgment. You will condemn. And we're hearing that properly, right? We are hearing that properly. I mean, if you're doing something stupid and you're living in stupid sin, stop it. 
Okay? Just stop it. So let's not get into that whole thing. Right? We have, an, we have a conscience too. Right? But the judgment stuff that rises against you in judgment because that's the weapon that's formed against you. We'll have judgment on it. It's a weapon. It wants to kill you. It wants to rip you down. Make you think God is not happy with you. You're not worthy. Things will never change. All that stuff. You condemn it. It's your heritage. And then God comes in and says, Yeah, and the righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Now the Lord stands in between you and the accuser of the brethren. Because all the tongues that rise against you in judgment, all the weapons that are formed against you are to say that you're not righteous. Because just look at you, you know. Obviously you're not because, because, because. But God says, no, their righteousness is of me. So if you want to talk about righteousness, you look at me. You don't look at them. You look at me. Their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. That's how you answer the accuser of the brethren. Revelation 12.11 says this. A wonderful verse. It should be underlined in your Bibles and in your hearts. They overcame him. Who? Who? The accuser of the brethren, right? They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you will condemn. How will you do it? By the blood of the Lamb, because you're washed in the blood of the Lamb. You are freed you are forgiven, you are cleansed, you are healed. The law of the spirit of life and the word of their testimony. You have a heritage, you have a history, you can say something about it and do something about it. Amen. This is right, yep. right? This is good. Second Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 says this. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Remember to be carnally minded is death? That's not how we approach things anymore. But the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Next verse. Casting down imaginations. Look at all this stuff that comes to our lives. These are the weapons that are formed against us. Strongholds, weird imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So often the battles that we have in our mind are things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God, that say they're more powerful than God, that God can't intervene in your life because of this, that God doesn't want to intervene in your life because of this. All of a sudden this is bigger than the Lord is. But God so loved the world that he gave us his son. And he condemned sin in the flesh. And bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Isaiah 54, 17. Let's go back. We'll, we'll finish with this. We'll finish with where we started. No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you will condemn. Because this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. This is our heritage. It's who we are. And their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Your righteousness is of God, is based on God, comes from God, and it's all about him. And he's put his clothing of righteousness on you. Your clothing of the law of sin and death. Jesus just took that away. And gave you a robe of righteousness. 
So that's why Romans 8, 1, the beginning of this whole Romans 8 chapter says, There is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. It doesn't exist. It is not there. Because the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Amen? Amen. We're going to have communion. When we partake in communion, reckon these truths in your heart. When you take the emblems and you ingest them, Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Take it and eat it. Ingest it. This is my blood of forgiveness. Take it. Eat it. New covenant. Drink it. Say to yourself, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. That's what communion is. New covenant. And no weapon formed against you will prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you condemn it. Because it's not true. It's your heritage. Your righteousness is of God. It's all in communion. Father, thank you for your word. As we continue on, Lord, to share your beautiful table, we just write these words in our heart and life by your spirit, Father God, and bring fruitfulness to our minds so that we will be spiritually minded. So we will live in this, walk in this, think in this, dwell in this. Thank you, Lord, for your truth, your righteousness, and the hope of our salvation. The spirit of life is resurrection, friends. It's resurrection. And we have resurrection living in our lives. Amen. going to go into worship right away and during worship uh, I invite you to come to the table here we have gluten-free cracker here yeah. if you're celiac and we also have the regular bread but while we're in worship today take heed to what was uh, said today the broken body and the blood of Jesus set you free Father I just uh, thank you for the way out of that place that condemns us oh God thank you that you've set the path before us to freedom Lord we choose that path Father God, I just pray that each one of us will grasp a hold of what you have done for us. Lord, no more condemnation. No more, Father God, to be in, in a place of in, even insecurity in you, O oh God. Father God, we are secure in your hand, O oh God. So Lord, we just say, we honor you, and to you be the glory, O oh God. So as we come, just uh, come up here and uh, take your take your emblems back, and just pray a while, and just let the Lord minister to you. Let Him minister to you. Let Him minister to you in a personal way. Hallelujah, Jesus. Blessing. Worthy is the Lamb who was 
just declare that over you love the spirit of life declare that over your life praise you Jesus
creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. See you next week. God bless you.